The False Gap intentionally creating a weakness in your position and baiting the enemy into attacking it, then exploiting that attack. To make this tactic work, let's try out two different scenarios, starting with an army of elite troops. In this case, we're outnumbered 3 to 1. Our army is composed of a shield wall, cavalry, and shock troops. We can separate out the shock troops by adding filters to each formation. Here's the basic structure. Two cavalry divisions on the left flank to counter enemy horse archers. Four groups of shielded infantry in the center, and shock troops held behind in reserve. The battle starts with the enemy blindly charging horse archers into our center and veering off to our left, which is where we charge both groups of cavalry. Using two groups of cavalry is ideal here since we want one group to force them back and another group to stop their retreat, effectively creating a sandwich of death and destruction. This cycle repeats a few times as the enemy infantry line approaches. When their shield wall is within 100 meters of ours, we break apart our line into a left and right flank, leaving the center completely open. This is the false gap. From here, a few things can happen. The enemy will concentrate their troops on one of the two sides, they will split into two distinct groups, or they will hit both sides and send troops through the center gap. In this case, because of our lack of archers in the rear, they decide to split troops into two groups. Now we send our shock troops crashing through the center to attack both newly created flanks. One big problem with this tactic is our shock troops become vulnerable to their enemy archer line in the rear. To counter this, we can send any available infantry forward to attack their archers, or we can direct our cavalry to help out. In this case, we send our elite cavalry to tie them up. As their line thins out, we can even curl our flanks inward to surround them, creating a pocket. The rest of the battle consists of our side destroying hopelessly outclassed troops as their elite division was smashed in the first engagement, and they are left with little more than peasants for reinforcements. The second battle was much more difficult. Both sides have comparable quality of troops, but the enemy outnumbers us by about 40% and has a distinct archer and cavalry advantage. In this case, we use our pitiful group of 10 archers to hold the center of our shield wall, with two smaller units covering both flanks. This will reduce casualties from both horse archers and cavalry charges from the side. Finally, we hold a single division of cavalry in reserves. As usual, the enemy horse archers charge to the front and try to take out our left flank. We counter by moving our cavalry to cut off a further flank. We're not looking to engage them, but simply keep them out of our backfield. The enemy shield wall approaches at an odd angle, but once flushed, they take the bait and wipe out our weak archer line. We send in the specialized shock troop division to shore up our center and then break their line in two. We don't have enough shock troops to fight both sides, so we help our right flank first, pushing through their shield wall and getting to the rear of their formation. On a man-to-man -man basis, they cannot deal with our shock troops. However, once again, the biggest threat are the archers to the rear of their line. We send in our cavalry to try to distract them. Once the right side has mostly been dealt with, we can slide our shock troops to the left to clean up. The balance of power has swung heavily in our favor now, since we've dispatched the majority of their high tier infantry. The biggest issue now is dealing with enemy mounted units. Up until now our line has held up, but we can't keep them from getting to the rear because our cavalry has dwindled down, and this is where I think the biggest mistake was made. Their infantry posed very little threat compared to their mounted forces, yet the formation I used was to counter the enemy infantry. The shock troops still perform well in the rear, taking out enemy cavalry that tried to pass through, and our frontline shield wall held off the enemy infantry with ease. But with each passing cavalry charge, our numbers shrank. And because Bannerlord has a janky reinforcement system, our reinforcements were easily swallowed up by the enemy because they spawned in right behind them. We did get another opportunity to deploy the shock troops to great effect though, pulling them around our right flank and rolling up the enemy's right side. But all good things must come to an end, and our brave shock troops fought to the last man. Clearly this was a battle of attrition now, and it would come down to small unit tactics. With the enemy infantry dealt with, it was time to charge the enemy archer line. It's always painful. Losses are inevitable, but once our line meets theirs, it was over in seconds. Now all that's left are to deal with a handful of horse archers and melee cavalry. However, it's incredibly important to remain composed and stay in the fight. It might seem like an easy win from here, but against repeated cavalry charges, we have to consolidate every single unit we have and hold our ground or get picked off one by one. Cavalry's biggest strength is being able to hit and move, so we counter by keeping as compact a formation as possible, ensuring that some of their horses will get stuck with each charge. We eke out one of the slimmest margins of victory. Only 8 troops survived, while casualties totaled nearly 2,000 combined. 
Using the false gap tactic afforded us a massive lead early in the battle, allowing us to absorb the mistakes made later on in the battle. Let me know what formations and tactics you would like to see me try out next. A big thank you to all the YouTube members and Patreon supporters. I don't take corporate sponsorship money, so your donations go a long way to making up for that.